Recently, I discovered a new form builder that definitely deserves some light shined on it. And this one is called BitForms. Now, I've been testing this out and using it for the last week. And this is a beast. There is so much to unpack. And I'm really excited to show it to you. Now, full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. But just know that whenever I am doing one of these sponsored videos, it's for something I find interesting that I think you will be interested in. And I always make sure and test it and make sure it's rubbish free. No rubbish here on Lightbox. Now there is a lot to BitForms. There's a lot of features. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through it and I'm gonna show you the main big features inside of this. Also, I'm gonna show you the things that really piqued my interest. Some things that I saw inside BitForms that I could see I would like to use in my own personal workflow. And then just to give you a full overview, this way you could decide if you would like to give BitForms a try. And if you are interested in it, there is a link inside the description to give all of you watching this video 20% uh, off. And if you do have any questions about BitForm, make sure to drop them inside the comments. That way the developers could get back to you and answer any of your questions. All right, let's go dive in, have a look and have some fun. I got everything set up here inside my testing website. I got the free version of BitForm and the pro version. Now the free version is a great way to get started. It has basically everything you need to build basic forms. But the pro version, this unlocks a beast and that's what I wanna show in this video. Let's take a look at the whole beast. All right, so here are some forms that I built and have been testing. If we go to our forms and we go to actions, we could already see there are lots of different options and this is pretty much the theme that I found with this plugin. There are lots and lots of options. For example, here we can see some of the bigger ones like we could take a look at the responses. These are the forms that have been submitted or they're being collected in the database. We got our settings, our confirmations, and we got conditional logic. So this is one of the beastly features. And the next one is integration. So we're gonna take a look at these two because these are pretty big right here. Now let's go ahead and create a form and take a look at the actual form builder. We have a few options. We could choose a blank form, a pre-built contact form, or the form import, but let's start with a blank one. All right. so. Starting off a of blank, it looks pretty blank, looks very open and barren, but actually there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. So let me walk you through it. Here on the left hand side, we have all of our fields. So I could start, I could put my text field, you know, it's drag and drop, you can move it around. I could put in my email field. You know, this one I can make my name right here. And then we got like the multi line text. This will be like your text area right here. And this is pretty much a basic form already done. I could just tweak it around, make my adjustments, and I'll show you that in a moment. But let's go back over here to these fills because there's over 30 of them. Like it's crazy how many there are. I mean, it has all the basic ones, you know, our check boxes, select, drop downs, radio buttons, and so on. You know, then it has more of the advanced stuff like file uploads, uh, advanced file uploads, and so on but then we also get over here to our username and password so this does have wp auth included that means we could create user registration forms login forms forgot password and reset password forms which i really really like because when i have a dynamic website i like to keep things very customized i don't like to have users going back and seeing the default wordpress login box in areas i like to show something more personalized now if we go through we have a lot more like url color picker we got the next step and previous step there is a multi-step form this is something that's new that was just added and then we also got payment fields too. We have our PayPal, RazorPay, and Stripe. All these got integrations. You know, this along with say repeaters or conditions, we could actually create fields where we could sell things on the website without having to use a super robust plugin like WooCommerce and keep everything nice, light, and clean. A few others I find super useful are the repeater fields, signature, and rating. You know, a lot of these right here, I would usually have to add on an add-on in order to give, say, an Elementor form extra functionality 
or I'd have to use a whole different form builder like this to achieve this. So it's great to see that all of these are included. All right, so these are the fills, but now let's dig in a little bit deeper because what I found with this is I could keep digging, digging, and digging and finding more. All right, let's start right here with the text. So when we click on it, we got our basic options like label, you know, like I could put name right over here. I could change uh, the placeholders, I could put, you know, your first name. We got options for putting icons and stuff, but then we got other things as well that I really, really like here that I haven't seen other forms include. Like one thing I like, I liked the subtitle right here, the subtitle option. Look at, I could write, you know, please, please let us know what to call you. This is pretty cool right here. Now, I've been able to achieve some things like this using CSS and some CSS hacks in order to get it, but it's nice to see this built in. And then if we go down here, we can see a lot more. Like you can see we got this helper text, same thing like as the subtitle except it goes under the form and then we could keep going and seeing you know there's a whole lot of options like just one field has all these options like autocomplete this is something i don't normally see an option for this is so dope and one thing i really like about this and that stood out to me the first time going through it was just how well thought out everything was for example they all have these helpful tool tips right here that give more of a description. This is really, really helpful here. And there are a bunch of learn more links, which I did have to use. Now, these are only the functionality options right here for a single name field or text field. Let's go and check out the styling. So there are two places we could go for the styling. We could go right here inside the field and we could click on this paintbrush tab. And then this is going to open up some styling options. Also, if you look over here on the left hand side, it's going to open up a lot more options here as well. And we're going to dig into this side in a moment. But really quick, I want to go back and show you the other option because you could go over here and instead of styling the fill, you could click on this paintbrush and instead style the theme. And I always like to start with the theme first. Like I want to style from the outside and work my way in because usually when we're styling up a theme, it's going to save a lot of work and prevent us from having to style up every individual element. So we have a few options over here. We could go to the Atlassian theme and we could go with this default right over here, or we could go with the default bit form theme or no style at all. Now I was using this, I mean, I still would like to test this out a bit more, but I just went on this and I just made some changes. So, you know, what we would do here is go and put in your brand colors and you can style up all the main things like your accent color, your backgrounds, your font colors, the field backgrounds and so on. And this is going to really help you keep that consistency on the form. But now let's jump over here to the left side because there is so much more over here. Oh my gosh, there is so much more. All right, there's a lot to unpack here. So first off, we got our form wrapper, the container. Then we got our field containers. But if we go down here to the individual elements, we could get more deeper into it on an element by element basis. Like right here, we got our text field. We got our email, multi-line, and button. And let's add another field here. Let's say I want to add this rating field here. Let me move this up to the top. I could use something like this for, say, my courses, allowing students to rate courses, which is something I really want to do. This is why I really like this rating field. And now we can see rating right over here. So whatever field you add is going to populate right here. And then as we go in, we could get so deep with this. So check it out. It starts off at an outer level and it works its way in and it just gets deeper, deeper and deeper. So let's check out the quick tweaks right here. Now, the reason why I say this is developer friendly is because it does a lot of things as a front end developer. I like seeing it do. For example, I got the option right here to choose. Do I want to use pixel M, RAM or percentage? This right here, I really, really like. And then check it out. We could go deeper right here and we got custom styles. We could override these styles. We could do hovers on it and set up our own hovers. 
And then we have all these different options on where to apply the background. This is beast mode right here. This is very impressive, all these options. Now it's a lot and it takes quite a bit of time to learn. It really does. And, you know, I thought this was going to only take me a few hours to wrap my head around, but I ended up spending days on this because, well, for one, it was fun, but also there was just so much to it. Now, I feel like this is developer friendly because of certain things like being able to choose pixel or rim, but also because there are custom classes throughout everything. And then we could also do custom attributes as well. We could dig into everything and have total, total control. I mean, just the text alone, you can see all the different things we could do here on the text, say here on the label. We could override this right here and then we could style it up. We could go ahead and use variables as well for our styles. And look, at we just have so many different options right here. We even got the option to set it as an important. They have this on everything. Like I've never seen this before. This is really, really, this is dope right here. And then check it out. We could even add more styles right here. So these are the default styles that's already being applied, but we could go ahead and add more. Maybe I want to add letter spacing. It doesn't give us an option here. I could choose my letter spacing. Maybe I don't want to use pixels. I want to use rim. Let me go ahead and do a 0.1. Let me do a 0 0.5, 0 0.5 rim. And there we go. Now that's way too much spacing, but it gives us these options, including, you know, the success and error messages as well. I could keep going on, but there's a lot more to show in a very short amount of time. Check it out. Now we have the other options as well. We could choose for our screen sizes. We could also choose our breakpoints. We also have our revision history and then our builder settings. And inside here, we could do things like add important rule to everything. We could go ahead and put in our own class prefix. And for all you front end devs out there uh, that love this kind of stuff, you already know what we are looking at. Also, our form width, we could go ahead and choose what we want it to be. You know, this is this is really dope. We could add in our custom code as well, CSS and JavaScript. This is just an overview of styling up a form. And as you can see, there are tons of options. You can really dig deep into it. And it kind of feels like the limitations that I felt from other form builders with this have been removed. Now, let's take a look at adding this to a site. All right, once you're done, you just update it. I'm going to go back here to my forms. Here is a form right here that I've already built out and styled up with my brand styles. All I'm gonna do is copy the short code and I have an Elementor page right here. What I'm gonna do is use the short code widget, drop that in here. And then I'm gonna paste this and let me hit apply. Let's update this right here. Now it's doing some weird stuff right here, but don't worry about that. It's just what it shows like in the builder. What you can see here is our form. This allows people to go ahead and fill it in. And then here is our review. By default, I really like what it does here. Look at when you hover over it and when you click on it, you're getting this hover effect and it's taking the brand styles that I added into the theme styles. I didn't even set that up, it automatically does that, so I really like this right here. And if this does show up funky like this inside the back end, it's just because we're using a short code. You could go ahead and just refresh the page, go back over here, select apply, and there we go. Now it's showing regular. You gotta fiddle with it a bit, but then it works itself out. So we took a look at setting it up. Now let's take a look at the settings. I'm gonna go back here to this new form. Let's go back to edit form. And up here at the top, we have a couple options. We have responses. This is where your database is gonna go. So when people fill out a form, you're gonna get all the details here. And then let's go over here to settings and you're gonna see this is where the options just start to quadruple and just keep going like i said so many options with this plugin right over here now first up these settings a lot of this has to do with validation and to protect from spam it has a lot of things like blocking ip list and so on then we have the confirmation so we could create custom success and error messages also redirects you could type in whatever you want you can style this up and then you could connect it to your form that you have inside the front end 
Then here is a big one that I know a lot of you are going to love. That is going to be the conditional logic. Now, I have gone through the conditional logic. I had to go through some tutorials and some videos. And luckily, Bitform does already have tutorials for this to help walk through it because this does get a lot more advanced. Like this gets very, very advanced right here. But if you need to have an advanced custom logic form, this is going to do it. We have our email templates as well. You can create new ones. And then we have our PDF templates, which is something I'm really interested in because I can see this as being something used for maybe creating contracts and streamlining the whole agreement process. For example, I could go over here to Builder. I could go down to Signature. Let's go ahead and move this up. And let's say, okay, we're not going to do a rating. Let's say we want to sell something like a project on our site. We could always make this you know an agreement where the customer signs it let's save this over here and then we could attach a pdf to this form so that way they sign it fill out the form they get the pdf now i got to test it to see how deep it could go and see how useful it is but my mind is already starting to work and see good use cases for this at least for myself and my workflow then we got our double opt-in, which is great, keeping everything GDPR compliant. I'm going to skip integrations. We're going to come back to this, all right? And there's a reason why we're coming back to this. I'm going to jump over here to WP Auth, and this allows us to do all that good WordPress stuff, you know, create user registrations, sign-ins, lost passwords, and so on forms. We could customize everything on our WordPress sites. And then this, this right here is really, for me, it's unique. And this is form abandonment. Now, this is one that really piques my interest because form abandonment is going to capture details and data that somebody is entering into the contact form but doesn't hit send. And this could be very, very useful. You see, I do a lot of conversion rate optimizations as a UI designer, and I use heat maps to test contact forms. You would be surprised how many people start to fill out a contact form but change their mind in the middle of the process before hitting that send button. They have a change of mind. They, you know, something tells them, oh, it's okay, forget about it. So having the form abandonment here allows us to see the data that's being entered because we could probably gather some very useful information. Maybe we could get a more in-depth look at what, you know, based on the site, what the users want to ask, but maybe have a change of heart and don't hit that send button. And then we also got options as well that, you know, make it more GDPR friendly. And then we could also leave it as a way where it stays in there. So if somebody's logged in, they come back. Well, whatever they started filling in is still being saved. That is super dope. Now, back over here to integrations because this is the next beast right over here. Let's go ahead and click on this. And they have over 50 integrations and you don't need add-ons for this. It's already in here. You don't need add-ons. I mean, including webhooks. There are so many integrations. And one thing you gotta know about BitForms and where I first discovered them was through Bit Integrations, which is a completely different plugin that works sort of like a, a Zapier just for WordPress. So they already have an integration platform, which means that they're able to bring, you know, what they built in that over to here. At least that's my guess. Because to be able to do this without adding a bunch of add-ons is dope this is really dope now there's a few other things as well let's go back outside okay let's go ahead we don't need to save it but if we go here to bitforms to our app settings there's a few more things in here uh we could go ahead and connect your google stuff that's pretty much standard but it does have a built-in smtp right here so you could go ahead and add your own and you don't need to add an additional plugin for it. You got your PDF settings. You could also add custom post types through here. Now, I haven't dug into it enough to see exactly what we could do for custom post types, but if you got a question about this, drop it in the comments so the developers can get back to you on it. Uh, we got our APIs, our payment setups. Again, you got the three options here. And then our general stuff. Now, one thing I was super, super curious about and I had to dig in and find out myself was about performance. 
Performance has always been something that worries me, especially when it comes to a uh, very robust plug-in and some form builders as well. Because there are some of the older, you know, the, the tried and true form builders, you'd be surprised how much bloat they actually add to a website. And there are some new ones that are very light and lean. And I wanted to see where does this one fall into. So I added perf matters and I kept everything off, did not enable anything except for the script manager. This way I could see how much and how big of the size of scripts are being loaded. And if we go to the page with the form, let's go ahead and turn on script manager. Well, let's look for it right here. We got a lot of Elementor stuff being loaded right here. A lot of Elementor Pro. But if we go over here, we only got a couple things being loaded here. We got this one, a 20 KB JavaScript from Bitform. And then we got the Bitform style, which is only 4.6 KB CSS being added. And that's the only ones, these are the only ones that I see. I think maybe two of them might also be it, and I'm not sure. Now as I go through it, I don't see anything else that looks related to Bitforms. And there might be a few others, but nothing here is big and really stands out, which looks like it is under 25 KB on a basic form, which for me was a very pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Now there is one thing I want to mention before we wrap up this video, and that is going to be the support because I did have to use support. There are some things I couldn't figure out. As you saw on the forum, there are so many options, and I was trying to figure out how to style and do something without reverting to CSS. I want to really see how far I could get with it. When I went over to the support on the website, they had the chat bot and I couldn't believe it. Within a minute, I had somebody on the chat bot. I've never had a plugin do that. Now it might be because we're both in Asia. Maybe our time is just aligned, but within a minute, there was somebody there. I had a few questions. They sent over screenshots with circles and arrows making it really easy to understand. Now there is one other thing to consider and that is going to be the price point. I've tried several other form builders. I've bought them inside the past and out of all the form builders out there, I feel that this is a good comparison to Fluent Forms. Uh, their pricing structure is almost identical. Uh, they don't have a bunch of add-ons. It's basically you pay for one site, a uh, few sites or unlimited sites, and then they have the annual and lifetime. Uh, very, very similar to Fluent Forms, and the functionality is also very similar. Although Bitforms does have a whole lot more when it comes to styling and options, and even to functionality, but they're very, very close to each other. Now for the annual plans, they go anywhere from just 20 bucks, $19 for one site up to 99 for one year. And then you can also get the LTDs as well, which I am a huge fan of if I have the opportunity to do that. And also if you use a link inside the description, you get 20% off of that as well. And if we go over here to Fluent Forms, which I gotta let you know, I am a fan of Fluent. I really dig Fluent a whole lot. Uh, but if we look at it though and check out the prices, well, you know, the single site here is 47. The single site here is 19. Let me see for the agency, the unlimited is 99 and here's 159. So Bitforms is about 60 bucks cheaper on that one. And if we go to the LTD, uh, unlimited here is quite pricey at 719. That's quite a bit. And if we go here to the LTD, it's 500. So, you know, you're going to save around 220 bucks. So my final thoughts, even though this is a sponsored video, this is a tool that I'm happy to explore and also show off because it's a beast. But what it comes down to and the question you need to ask yourself is what's important inside of a form builder? That is always the most important thing we could ask ourselves. And I want to hear from you. What do you think is most important inside any form builder when choosing one? Drop that inside the comments. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and opinions. Also, if you got questions about Bitform, again, drop them inside the comments. That way, the developers can get back to you. And don't forget that 20% off coupon that is inside the description. Well, that's it for this video. I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts about it. And I'll be back again soon with another one. Thank you for watching.